Hi Booktube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be my March wrap up. So March was actually a really really successful reading month for me. Um, I don't know what happened but I just started reading and couldn't stop. So let's uh, start off with all the stats. So first off I actually finished a total of 11 books in the month. I did have one DNF uh, on top of that, that isn't included in the stats. Um, although the pages, the number of pages that I've read of that book have been counted. So in total, uh, the um, total number of pages I read is 3,094 pages. I listened to a total of 35 hours and 33 minutes of audiobook. I've officially DNF'd three books, however only one of those was actually attempted um, in this month. Two of them are books that were on my started list at the beginning of the year, but I've actually looked through that list and decided that I'm not going to continue them. Genres read, uh, pretty much mostly uh, romance. I did read one fantasy novel and I did read one that is kind of titled Crime and Romance. But I think that at the point we are in this, because it's a series, uh, it is actually more crime than it is romance these days because the couple are very well established at this point. In terms of my series tracking, all 11 books count towards series that I have um, on my list. Two of them were series starts. One of those was because it was a book club pick. Uh, the other, well, both of them were, were book club related Um one of them is my official monthly book club. The other one is the catch up book club, but I'll talk about those nearer the time. Six of the books were series continuations and three books were series finishes. So three series have been knocked off of the list of ones that I had on the go. What about my no buy book challenge? Well, if you saw my February wrap up, maybe my March TBR, then you'll know that I actually failed in February and I bought books. Uh, so March I was starting from scratch. So like I said, I read 11 books. All 11 were from a series. Some of them were purchases um, that I had made, but because they're series purchases, they don't count towards purchases. They don't count to the no buy book challenge. Of the 11 books, only five were books that were on my TBR on the 1st of January. Um, so I have knocked five off the amount, so I am now down to ten, um, and the day that I'm filming this is a Saturday, I've been to town this morning, I went to Waterstones, I went to the works, I went in specifically looking for one book only, and that was a book club pick, neither shop had it, I left both shops with no books, I made no purchases. Um, and I'm filming this on the 1st of April. So I think that I have done absolutely brilliantly this month um, to knock five off uh, the list um, and have five books that I, sorry if the uh, tripod m video wobbles, my cat just jumped on the table. Um, so I think I've done really, really well. Um, I'm doing absolutely brilliantly and I'm really pleased with myself uh, for, for avoiding buying books even when I wanted to um and yeah I've uh, I've done really really well and I'm really pleased with myself just as a final bit of stats uh before I get into details of the books I just thought I'd do a quarterly check up with you so I've read a total of 24 books which means I'm just about a third of the way through um my 75 books that I've set myself for the year. I read 6,750 pages and I've listened to 55 hours of audio, almost 56 hours of audio book, which means that a quarter of the way into the year, I'm more than halfway done with my 100 hours of audio challenge. Um, in, in terms of 25,000 pages, obviously I'm not quite so far in with that. I need to make a bit more progress. Um, I either need to read a lot more shorter books or I need to read quite a few chunky books uh, to catch that up. Although I think actually in terms of the number of pages, I am actually 
just about equal or, or a little bit ahead of where I need to be. Um, but I am doing really quite well with that as well. Uh, for the whole of the quarter, I've read four um, physical books, 15 ebooks, and I've listened to five audiobooks. Uh, one of the books in that, in that quarter is a reread. Um, and like I say, uh, as I've already said, three DNFs for the year. And the genre breakdown for what I've read this year. So I have read one fantasy. I have read two crime or mystery novels. I've read three historical uh, fiction novels and I've read 18 romance novels. Who, who, who's surprised by that? Not me. <laughs> so those are just a few quarterly stats for you. And let's get on and talk about the books that I finished. The first book that I finished was actually a carryover from February, but I did read the majority of it in March. So I'm going to talk about it here. And that is The Blade Itself by Joe Abcrombie. This is the first book in his First Law series. And it's um, the first book that we read for the First Law Along, which is uh, the Catch Up Book Club choice. Uh, series choice. Um, the Catch Up Book Club is mainly run by Becca over at Becca and the Books and they pick um, a long running series or a series with quite a few books the majority of them haven't read or haven't started and they work their way through it together. Um, this book, um, in terms of a fantasy start, it's not really grabbed me. Uh, I am mildly intrigued is probably the best way to put it. I don't really remember much from this book. We have on the back, it tells you that there's three main characters. However, there are a lot more characters than just the three um, that we're introduced to and whose POVs that we follow. It's a world, um, it's a medieval style world. Um, it takes place um, across, there's good and evil, there's north and south divide and um, there is a magic system, but don't really know very much about it, even at the end of this book. And yeah, I'm just mildly enjoying I don't really know what to say about it because, I mean, it was the beginning of the month. So, and, and I don't hold details about books that very long in my head. Anyway, um, all I know is I want to read the next book because I want to know where the story is going to go next. Um, especially with this war looming, which has kind of... I think it's, there's going to be a war fought on two fronts in the end because we've got a regular war that's starting between the north and the south or north and the middle, I think, actually, more than north and south. Um, and then we've got some characters who are then involved with the magic side of it. Um, and I believe that there's going to be some kind of magical war as well, uh, which may or may not have some sort of relation to the, the regular war that's going on between the north and the mid. Um, I guess if I keep reading, I'll find out. I do have book two. It is on the TBR for April. Um, so I am going to try and get it read. Um, and then hopefully maybe I'll know a bit more by the end of that. But um, yeah, not really sure what's going on. And I do feel like that... It, is a mood with fantasy at the moment is that I just don't feel like I know what's going on in them anymore. To combat uh, The Blade itself being a series start, my next book was a series finisher. Uh, it was only a duology, um, but this book is Rendezvous with Yesterday by Diane Duval. I read the previous book to this one quite a few years ago now. And then when this book came out, I downloaded it straight away and I just never got to it. It's medieval romance, um, so knights and stone fortresses and kings and... But there's also an element of time travel. Our main uh, female character, whose name I've completely blanked on and haven't written down in my journal, um, she is um, a bounty hunter and she goes on a job with her brother and the job goes wrong and uh, she's fatally wounded, but she ends up going back in time. A stranger appears to her just as she's um, unaliving and she goes off and she finds herself um, coming to in a completely different world in medieval England. Um, 
There she meets um, a, a knight uh, who takes care of her, decides to take, look after her. And it's about how she falls in love with him from there and how she has to convince him that she's from the future. Uh, and there's lots of other things going on as well. Um, the first book was all about magic, whereas this book is more about um, the history side of things, uh, which I, I really quite enjoyed that. And I really did enjoy this book. And I do think, I mean, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the, the book previous to this. Um, and I don't know why I didn't continue at the time. And actually, I really enjoyed her writing. And I am intrigued because what this book does is it ties into another series that the author has written. And I'm intrigued and I want to read this series because that carries on the ma that carries on with the magic, but not the original magic from the first book to this. So, yeah, I, I just I am very, very intrigued. Um, and I she is added to my list of authors. I really need to do carry on and try more work from her in future. Unfortunately, can't purchase any because I'm on a book buying ban. The next book, the next finish, was my favourite of the month. And although I had a five star read in uh, January and this book isn't five stars, this is my favourite book of the year so far. And that book is Glow by Raven Kennedy. This is book four in the Plated Prisoner series. It's the penultimate book in the series. And I want gold now. I want the final book now. I am loving this uh, fantasy romance series. I have adored Oren from the beginning. Yes, in the beginning she was a bit wishy-washy and a little bit, you know. But by the end of the first book, Guild, um, she had really started to take control. And when she met Rip in book two... Um, at the end of book one and the, the the path he takes her down in book two starts in book two just I just adore her but this the end of this book I cannot talk about this book I cannot tell you anything about what happens in this book because it would just spoil things um, from the previous books but this follows immediately on from book three um and where this book ends, I need gold now because I need to know where it goes from here. It opens up a whole world of other um, stories uh, that are going to happen. And, and, and just I'm just loving this series. And I think when I eventually get my hands on gold, there is no release date for the paperback yet. And this is one of those times where I really wish, even though they were really expensive, I really wish that I had invested in the hardback copies because I wouldn't have quite so long to wait for gold. But then I would have had Glow last year and I would still be having the wait for gold. But uh, yes, if you love fantasy romance, persevere, try Guild, persevere with it past Guild. You need to get to... Um, Glint, you need to get to book two um, because that's when Oren really starts to come into her own, starts to develop. And I just, I adore this book and I adore this series. And yeah, I, I don't know if I haven't explored if Raven Kennedy has written anything else. Um, I have a feeling that once I am able to buy books that she's going to be an author that I'm looking for. Um, I definitely want to read more and see if I have the same feelings for any other book she's written as I do for this series. Um, I have a feeling this is going to make the all-time fantasy favourite list um, and the all-time favourite romance list uh, because I, I, just, I can't gush about it enough and I need to stop. And from there I continued on with my romance journey. And I continued into another final book. Um, so the third series that I finished this year, this book was Final Offer by uh, Lauren Asher. It was book three of her Dreamland Billionaires trilogy. And this is Callahan's story. Um, 
and it's also the accumulation of the backstory with their inheritance with Callahan and his brothers and their father and their inheritance and what they have to do to earn it and we finally find out in this book as well what their father had to do um and actually I think this is one of the things that was really well done. It's second chance romance. Um, Cal has been tasked by his grandfather to go and stay one summer in um, the family uh, summer house and but he has to sell it as well. Um, only he can't have any external help um, from anyone in his family with selling it. Uh, but he has to convince the current own tenant um, to let him sell as well. And it turns out that she actually part owns it. Uh, Lana um, is Callahan's first love and only love. And Callahan is Lana's first and only love. And it's, um, it's about how they deal with their issues. They initially split up because Cal had a drink and drug issue and um, Lana told him to, to go basically when they were teenagers it broke her heart um, but she had to do it at that point it set Callahan on the path to recovery at that point however with alcohol he's mastered drugs um and mastered isn't the quite the right word but he no longer uses drugs but he does still drink alcohol and drink to excess and he uses it as a crutch and he is heavily reliant on it he drinks throughout the day he drinks in stressful situations and he will just drink at the end of the day just to end the day he's a he's a very high functioning alcoholic um but he is starting down the path of realising just what he's not able to have because of his reliance on alcohol. And yes, meeting Lana and meeting Lana's daughter, who isn't Callahan's, um, meeting Lana's daughter and starting the relationship with them is one of those things that helps to bring that home to him. Now... This isn't one of those stories where he is magically off the drink because he meets up with Lana again and they start falling in love again. That doesn't happen. Um, I know that does happen quite a bit that, you know, falling in love fixes everything. But this book doesn't do it. In fact, this book, hi, the way um, this book has been written, it does, it comes across to me that... Um, the situations of he wants to be a better person he doesn't want to be reliant on alcohol he wants to be present for Lana and for her daughter and there are times when he isn't because of alcohol and even though he's made a promise um to not have alcohol as a crutch he falls back on it he fall he fails um and this book continually shows him having this reliance on it and 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 you know, trying to stop until he actually comes to terms with the fact that he needs to make the effort for him. And I think that's the thing. He, he stops trying. The point that he actually goes to rehab isn't about Lana, isn't about Lana's daughter. It's about him. And I think that's what she's done well, is that she's shown that, um, you know, for someone to to change and turn their life around, they have to make the decision for themselves. Um, and I, I felt that it was handled really, really well. Um, not that I know anyone with addictions like that, um, but I do feel that, you know, because she avoided falling into the trope of love fixes everything, I, I think that actually, you know, that is probably handled a lot better than some romance books I've read in the past. In terms of the romance, I loved Cal and Lana together. Lana really kept him on his toes. She didn't let him be the spoilt playboy billionaire that he made himself out to boy. And he had to rein it in. But she also saw sides of him that no one else did. And she encouraged that. And they encouraged each other. Um, Callahan realised that Lana has this whole image of herself of being self-reliant. And he tries not to tread on her toes. 
he does things that um, will help her out, um, but in the main, she gets there on her own and he supports that. Um, I absolutely loved it. It was a great finish to the series, um, especially in terms of the alcoholism, because um, there are other situations, there are other people in the story who have the same battles that Callahan meets um, and the changes and it, and it highlights the differences for people getting help um, and why it may work and why it may not work. Um, but yes, definitely uh, a good series to read. I loved the whole take on Disneyland. Um, and I loved that how each brother had their own were their own distinct people. They had their own distinct personalities. And I, I mean, I would read. I'm not quite sure I'd go back to Lauren Asher's backlist, but I can see the quality in her writing starting to come through. Um, and I look forward to reading more from her in the future. My next finish was an audiobook, and that is Angel's Flight by Nalini Singh. This is. Um, a bind up, an audio bind up of four short stories set in her Guild Hunters world. I started the Guild Hunters series last year when I was decorating my flat um, and I breezed through the first three audiobooks and then didn't go back to them. I did download the fourth one, but I never actually went back to it. Um, and because these novellas are set um, just before and just after, the, the three books I've already listened to, I decided to go back to this one first and I really enjoyed it. It was four couples. Two of the couples are ones that we know about from the previous books and it just gives us the background to how they got together. Just little short stories, um, just then because they're not going to be prominent characters um, in the series moving forward but it just means that you know how they got to their happy ever after, which they already had at the start of book one. I really enjoyed listening to each one. Um, a couple of the, the characters were new to me and uh, I really enjoyed them. And it actually gave me a taste for the series again. Um, so definitely um, moving on with that series and I could count it off some of the um, books that I've got on my series in progress. The next book was another series finish and that was Filthy Beautiful Forever by Kendall Ryan. This is a book series I started many many years ago um, and just never finished it and with it being um, the month of oh what was it called what do we call it what do we call it final book support group my brain went then Ugh. um this was a good excuse to get this book off the list unfortunately it wasn't successful for me i did give it quite a low rating um the quality of writing it was a little bit stilted um it was a little bit jerky um and i just there were times, the, the, the book to me reads as though it takes place over a few weeks, whereas the author keeps referring to this happened a few weeks ago and it's like, but you've only been there three days. So how can that be weeks? And then there's months and we're like, and I know that it does take place over a span of months, but it just, the way it's written, um, I think the author might have been getting a bit confused with the timelines, maybe didn't have anyone to beta read it or to edit it for her. Uh, and it did just become a bit of a problem. Um, I mean, even even the physical um, scenes, they lacked any heat. And I didn't get the couple. And I just, I don't really remember what I thought of the series originally. And yeah, it's just, I'm probably never going to revisit this author, to be perfectly honest with you. That's how that book left me feeling. The next book is a continuation of a series I started this year. Um, that is The Games We Play by S. Cole. It's the second book in her Iron Outlaws Motorci Motorcycle Club book. I keep wanting to say Iron Wolves, but it's not. It's Iron Outlaws. Um, this is book two, and this is Spark, uh, who is the club sergeant at arms, and Iris who is the niece of the local Irish Mafia crime boss. And the two don't get on. 
but spark and iris just have this connection um spark is the ultimate i mean there, there's an element of, if you are concerned about stalking there is an element of stalking in this book but it's more that he's watch he's not doing it in terms to find out what she does and where she goes and who she's with and it's not from a jealous point of view he's more he feels responsible because she was injured in book one because of him and he feels responsible but he also felt this spark with her um and he wants to keep her safe so he's watching to make sure that no one else uh is going to hurt her um because he has a real protective streak um and this is what fuels their interactions um he does tone it down a little bit once she gets wind of what's going on or she we find out that she knows he's been watching her and actually she's not been that bothered by it um because she feels that it's not being done in a menacing way she doesn't feel menaced by him um and yeah the heat was just the i mean scarlet cole s cole she knows how to write a physical romantic scene and enough said um i thoroughly enjoyed this book um i did think it got a bit to and fro a little bit you know we'd, we'd kind of start making progress with the danger and then we pull back and then we'd make pro more progress with the danger and then we pull back but in the end the um the danger actually for iris in the end um was more of a setup for book three and i'm really looking forward to getting my hands on book three i think it comes out in may um because it's the end of this book sets up the third book very very nicely and i think it's going to be far more dangerous um than this one was uh but yes definitely looking forward to picking up the third book I mean, I I just, I think if S. Cole, Scarlet Cole wrote the Talifin book, I'd read it, basically, at this point. The next book that I finished was um, another series continuation, like I say. I, it's all series this month. But uh, it was another audio book, and this was Archangel's Blade by Nalini Singh. This is book four um, in the Guildhunter series. And in this, we're following Dimitri and Honor. Uh, Dimitri is a thousand year old vampire and Honor is um, a guild hunter who has been in a previous book she was attacked and rescued she has been brutally attacked held prisoner by vampires fed, fed from without her permission violated physically um, and she is processing that the head of the guild hunters um puts her in a position where her expertise because she has a knowledge of languages and ancient languages um dimitri needs someone with that knowledge to help deciphering a tattoo and um honor is the only one that can do that so the guild hunter leader she does put honor in the position where she needs to work with Dimitri and obviously this is now very outside of her comfort zone um and it's all about honor learning to trust also um Dimitri when before he was made a vampire he had a wife and family and they were brutally murdered by um an archangel and it's it turns out that Honor has the memories from Dimitri's wife um, of old. And it's about how Honor learns to start recognizing um, these memories for what they are. We also get Dimitri's memories um, from that time as well. And it's about how Dimitri approaches Honor and allows Honor the space to learn to trust and how honor through that is also falling in love with him i really enjoyed it it was a good continuation of the series uh again i mean they're a little bit formulaic at this point there's there's danger there's you know archangels are going mad 
Um, they have to stay safe. They have to solve a mystery. They're fairly formulaic, but I'm enjoying them. Um, they are a good fun ride. They're not ones that I'd want to binge in one go, although I have a little bit in March because I have read, I did listen to the short stories and then I listened to this one. Um, but they're intriguing. You know, the, there is the subplot of everything else that's going on in the world with the other archangels that's keeping you going. Um, so I will be listening to more and reading more in future. The next finish was the Cliptrature Book Club pick for the month and that was Throttled by Lauren Asher. This was her debut book um, and it shows. It really, really shows. Now, The Dreamland Billionaires, like I say, I can see where her writing is going. I can see the improvement. Throttled is very much her first book. Um, I did enjoy it. I did like Noah and Maya together. Um, it's set in the world of F1. There were... I. I had a couple of niggles with the F1 setting, but not enough to pull me out of the story and make me want to stop reading it. Um, I think overall she has a good grasp of Formula One. Um, but there was just something um, about this book. Now, the positives are that there were two distinct points in this book where Noah and Maya could have had their third act breakup and gone their separate ways but she didn't do that um she actually they actually dealt with the situation in a mature manner and they communicated with each other and dealt with it as a couple rather than one of them throwing a hissy fit and telling the other one it was over which i actually really liked that was really refreshing because that doesn't often happen um in romance novels quite often the, the things that happened in this would have caused a third act breakup and then they would have found a way to come back together um and i i actually i actually really appreciated that what i couldn't get over now i am not accusing the author of plagiarism however there were more than a few scenes that heavily reminded me of a motor racing romance novel that I read seven years before, or I read, no, I read 10 years ago, but was released seven years before this one. I mean, and I know, I know that, you know, there's only so many things that can happen between a couple. There were just too many in this book that were far too similar to something else. Um, and, and like I say, I don't want to accuse the author of plagiarism, at all um because i didn't get that vibe from dreamland billionaires series um but throttled yeah i'm not sure i'm going to continue with the series i have added it to my series in progress spreadsheet i might give it a try because like i say i can see improvement in her writing with later series but i'm just not sure and book 10 of the month was visions in death by jd robb this is book 19 in the In Death series where we're following Eve Dallas. She is a New York Police Department homicide detective. Um, she's actually a lieutenant at this point and her uh, sidekick um, Delia Peabody, her love interest husband Rourke, um, Delia's love interest McNabb and all the other side characters that come with Eve. Uh, I have noted this book in my planner as a crime novel rather than a romance. It is billed as a romance and when you read the first few books, initially it is because there's a lot of push and pull between Eve and Rourke. But by now, by book 19, they're settled and happy and their relationship is ongoing. There isn't a lot of places for their romance to go in this now other than for them to continue to be a functioning happy couple i don't count that as romance um so i counted this as a crime book uh eve has to solve a murder a serial killer this time who is um murdering women in the new york city parks um and he's quite brutally attacking and murder the, murdering them um it brings up as usual it brings up elements from eve's past which I really think she needs to get therapy for at this point. 
I've watched um, another YouTuber, um, Big, Head, what, what, Big Head Bookworm, Louise. Uh, she's talked about this series in her most recent uh, video. And she says that, you know, at this point, Eve just needs to get over it. I'm already there with that opinion. Book 19, I'm already there. Um, Eve's just this big ball of frustrated anger. And she just needs to get therapy. Basically, she needs to take up that there, there is a therapist that comes into every book and she offers Eve therapy every single book. Eve just needs to start saying yes. She needs to let this person, this therapist, who she absolutely 100% trusts, let give her help. Um, I don't read these books for Eve now. I read these books for the crime, for the mystery. They are all murder mysteries. Um, and I think so far only one book have I actually gone, hmm, I know who the killer is. This book, again, you don't meet the killer until uh, J.D. Rob wants you to meet them. Um, and there is actually a twist at the end of this one, which I, I kind of did sit there and go, whoa, where did that come from? Um, because it had been, I'm not going to say anything else because it will give it away. And if you read it, um, you know, you need to have that moment. Um, but yeah, I so I did really appreciate that. And I, I actually have enjoyed this series. Again, it's going to be one that I read maybe a couple of years. I'm not going to make any big efforts to catch up with this series. Um, but I do enjoy them when I pick them up. My final finish of the month was the fifth book in the Guild Hunter series. So, like I said, I will carry on and read more. Um, but I already had it on my uh, Audible account anyway. Um, and I'm trying to listen to more of the books that I've already got on Audible so that I can clear that down. I've got too many on there. Um, but this is Archangel Storm by Nalini Singh. Like I say, it's book five in the Guild Hunter series. And in this book, we're following Jason, who is Raphael's spy master. And he's sent on a mission to India um, to solve the mystery of the Archangel of India's consort being murdered. While he's there, he meets the Princess Mahia and um, she he has to make a blood vow with her because Neha, the Archangel, doesn't trust him to not report secrets uh, he stumbles across to Raphael. Um, and she wants to keep them to herself, which is kind of understandable. Um, however, there are some things that happen. Mahia actually he realizes jason realizes that she actually is very very useful to him um she notices a lot of things that maybe he might not um and she's able to go um into situations where he wouldn't and through that um they start falling in love jason is quite a closed off character um and you get a lot of his history throughout this book as a child his um, character is very much shapen at, at an early age so you get the flashbacks to that to what happens um, and how Mahia isn't someone who put she doesn't push him um, to be more than he is she accepts him as he is and she doesn't push for more um, and she doesn't ask him to promise more and I thought that was really lovely I binge listened to this um, yesterday, uh, today's 1st of April. I wanted to finish this before the 1st of April because I wanted to finish it before Realmathon started. So I literally sat in my flat all afternoon just listening to this book. Um, and again, probably not the right way to listen to it. Um, I maybe didn't take in things uh, as fully as I would have if I'd listened to it in a bit more bits and pieces but I did enjoy it I do have the next book in the series um in transit from to my local library so that I can pick it up and read it um I've heard some things about audible recently that has made me a little uncomfortable with their service and I have paused my subscription for the moment um, so I'm not getting any more audio audiobooks from them and the audiobooks are not available through my library but they have a couple of the, the books in paperback 
so I have reserved the next one and like I say that's in transit I'm just waiting for that to arrive for me to collect it um, but I will continue the series and will probably continue the series throughout the rest of this year so that was all the books that I finished the eagle-eyed among you may notice that I didn't talk about the book club pick for Cozy Book Co. And that's because that was my one and only DNF this month. Um, a Room with a View by E.M. Forster. I made it 36 pages into this before I just went, you know what? No. I was actually on sprints, um, watching sprints. And I said I was reading this book and that I was struggling with it. And the guys there were like, oh my God, oh my God, no, don't force yourself. It's not worth it. Um, it is not a great book. Um, and I wasn't alone. Um, the others in the book club, they did persevere and they did finish it. However, none of them liked it. I think, I think this is the first book where we all had absolute agreement um for it i even though i dnf'd it i did join the um the chat the group chat for it and i spent the entire 40 minutes that we were talking laughing at the others um because of how much they were ranting and to be honest i'm glad i didn't persevere <laughs> listening to them rant um did make me just go you know what i'm glad i stopped because i probably would have put myself off of classics uh, I think we've pretty much decided that we're going to try for another classic later on in the year um, but this one was not for any of us and we were all in total agreement. I'm really annoyed that I purchased a copy. I couldn't get this from the library. Um, I didn't want it on Kindle. Um, I thought if I'm going to read a classic I, I'd need to read it in physical form. I mean there's not even a can I take it back at this point? I should have asked when I was in Waterstones late, earlier today. Um, you know, I read 36 pages. Can I bring it back? I hated it. Um, but they have numerous copies on that. When I was actually looking, they actually had three or four more copies of this on their shelves. No. This is now going to make its way over to the pile on the other side of the room, which is my pile of books that I am taking to the charity shop. Um, I just haven't got them there yet. Uh, I unhauled them last year. <laughs> There's a whole video talking about them. Um, but this is going to be added to that pile. And I am never going to try EM Forster ever again. So there we have it. My very long, at this point, we're 50 minutes. I'm hoping I can chop some of this down. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should have done this in two parts this month. Um, <clears throat> yes, that was my rather successful reading month for the month of March. Uh, fingers crossed that April is as successful as March um, because we are in Realmathon um, and I am looking forward to a lot of it. I've got a lot of romance uh, on my TBR this month or on my might be read this month. Um, so yeah, I am hoping that I have as successful a month in April as I've had in March. How did you do in March? Have you read A Room With A View and what did you think of it? Let me know. Um, are myself and the other ladies in the group in the minority? Uh, or are we in the majority? Uh, let me know. Um, if you have enjoyed this video, then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, at the point that I'm filming this, I have 151 subscribers. I have hit the 150 mark. Um, so thank you to the uh, three subscribers, two, three subscribers that I've gained in the last couple of weeks uh, to tip me over the 150. Fingers crossed, um, I don't fall back below. Uh, but yes, if you are enjoying my videos, please subscribe. Um, I'm trying to get a video up most weeks. Um, so look out for me in my next one and I will see you all there. Bye. Mm -hmm.